So New World Season 2 is here, it dropped last week, and in this video I'm going to help you decide whether you should reinstall your game, or simply come check it out in a new series I'm doing called, Is This Game Worth Your Hype, or Does It Belong in the Waste Pipe? So surprisingly, Season 2 actually dropped pretty much on time. I think they were an hour or so late, which is fantastic compared to where they've been in the past. Now we'll quickly talk about the player numbers. Of course, with a new content drop, how big or how small, we'll get on to that in a minute. The player numbers have gone up. Is it as much as they thought? Who knows? So in June, we had a peak player base of 20,000. And so far, with the patch just dropping and the weekend just gone, we've had a peak player base of just under 26,000. So it's not a huge increase so far. I believe this season was essentially a pre-patch before season three and this isn't me coping i just know that in season three there's more content right obviously the big thing in this was the sandworm which again we'll get on into a minute but yeah at the moment the player numbers have gone up a little bit and i do believe they're going to head head back down this week and onto the weekend it has launched with a lot of bugs but it's launched and people have come back checked it out and i think they're going to leave quite quickly again one of the new things they brought out again as per season one is a season two quest line so genuinely i had high hopes for this and that was before playing Diablo 4 recently. Diablo 4 has absolutely it's spoiled us in terms of story and cinematics and genuinely getting hooked into the game. Now, I would be playing more Diablo 4. I enjoy the more sort of over-the-shoulder looking out rather than sort of the top-down isometric style. So I was jumping into Season 2 on New World with, with very little expectations and, you know, that I was granted. The storyline's there. You can follow it. You can listen to the voiceovers. They've done a pretty good job of that. They are genuinely introducing some cinematics. But again, the level of cinematic is, is extremely low compared to what we've just seen in Diablo. Now, of course, Diablo is, is very much up there as one of the best, if not the best, games with stories and everything, in my opinion, anyway. So, uh, you know... They don't necessarily have to fill those shoes. Obviously, Diablo spoilers recently. But yeah, you can jump into the season quest. And what they've done is they've sort of filled you up with, which will hopefully help you doing some of the, the content. So as you progress through the, the seasonal story, you will get equipment that essentially has Beast Ward and Beast Banes on them. So I guess guide you towards the Sandworm. And at the end of the season story, your goal is to kill the Sandworm. So yeah, the season story is out. It's not great. It's probably not something to get out of bed for. But if you're playing the game, it's worth doing it for the rewards. Now, one of the quests you have to do while doing the seasonal story is something called the Hatchery. Now, this is the first 10 man trial. There is a solo option, which I opted for doing the quest line. Obviously, everyone is doing their own thing and pro progressing at different times. So there is a solo option. Now, I believe it might have been this one. It might have been another one. I actually fortunately got through the whole questline fine but i have seen incredible amounts of bug reports since this season's job there's performance issues there's quest issues there's things not spawning there's just problem after problem i actually don't know whether you guys they should be fixed by now by the time you watch this but there has been a lot of bugs but yeah the first piece of content i really kind of got into then was the hatchery trial i did it as a solo and then we went back later on and did it as a 10 man i was pleasantly surprised at this i again i didn't have extremely high expectations they've just done in my opinion a good job for new world now i know we do this a lot of time we're like oh well it's new world you know we don't have to compare it to anything else and that and that's kind of what i'm doing here for the game for the players and for people coming back the hatchery is genuinely good it's got some new mechanics i don't know if this is intended but it, it's kind of got a wipe mechanic where you, you get pulled across the arena and most of the time you end up getting kicked off the edge it's not necessarily a wipe mechanic per se but Half of your team dies, if not three quarters, and then you have to restart. <laughs> now, there is ways around this. You know, if you stand close to it, we found that if you don't press WASD and you're sort of under his toes, it doesn't happen as much. But things like that are quite fun. The walls of fire are quite fun. I know we've seen that in Imperium Forge recently, and they've just kind of reworked that. But genuinely, the whole vibe of the hatchery, it is fun. Like There's nothing more I can say. It's fun. Okay, so let's talk about the sandworm. A lot of you would have experienced the sandworm back when Brimstone launched, where every now and then you saw it fly out of the sand. Um, and it was absolutely phenomenal. Genuinely, this was one of the most exciting pieces of content I've been waiting for since launch. Now, that's a lot coming from me, who basically sits in First Light 4. Not anymore because it's gone. On. PvPing, whether I'm good or not, I enjoy PvP in New World. But I was genuinely excited for, for the sandworm. So the sandworms come out, they come out on the PTR. A lot of us complained that it was too easy. It was, it genuinely was. Now it's come out onto live, they buffed it, they basically increased its health and its damage, and it is a lot harder. I have seen complaints across the weekend. It's too hard. Casuals won't be able to do this. Meh, 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 meh. I think it is 
brilliant. Genuinely brilliant. You should not be able to complete the hardest content within 24 hours. Well, let me tell you, people in New World have completed it within 24 hours. And the top guys obviously are now setting the standard for everyone else and they're looking at how it's getting done. I think they've done it in six and a half minutes. This is a raid with a timer of three hours. They're doing it in six minutes. <laughs> as far as raids go and, you know, gaming goes in MMOs, and if you compare it to other MMOs, this still is not hard enough. And the reason it's not hard enough isn't because it doesn't have enough health or doesn't have enough damage. It's because it lacks in, in mechanics. The mechanics that it does have is genuinely quite fun, but it lacks in it for a three hour timer raid. Of course, it doesn't, you don't need three hours. It just allows you to rerun it over and over again. I think that's how they've done it in New World rather than it taking a three hour fight. It does just lack in mechanics, but I don't care. All of that aside, I don't care. Genuinely, the sandworm is fun. It is extremely difficult. I won't get into the nitty gritty of this. I'm just giving you a bit of an update of what's going on. One of the reasons the sandworm is extremely difficult is one is communication. You've got to communicate with your, your friends. You don't have to just have to rely on four other people anymore in like an expedition. You have to rely on 19 other people to basically pull their weight. And if two or three of the four of them start to die, you know, it becomes extremely hard for the rest of you. That's one of the most difficult parts. Then you go back into how you get into the to the worm and, and how you, you essentially be able to fight it. It's your gearing. Now, this goes back into new one again. We've got gear sets now, but let's be honest, they're not loadouts, they're gear sets. So you can start to, but you can start to organize your gear. As I mentioned a second ago, the seasonal quest, they give you worm gear, but they only give you medium worm, worm gear. What AGS should have done, in my opinion, is allow you to have a choice between light, medium, and heavy, and everyone can go out and have a very basic set to go in and fight the sandworm and then it comes down to teamwork and mechanics now it's not going to be this gear it's not going to be the best gear you're not going to be able to do it easy with this gear but you would at least have the ability to get in and try it a lot of people are just going to come back to the game they're going to be like oh my god i need xyz gear i need light gear i need heavy gear not everyone's going to need medium the thought process to gear yourself up with these beast banes beast wards when we now know that they're leaving the game is just People ain't going to do it. People are just not going to do it. So just an extremely big oversight from AGS on this point. But the sandworm is good. The sandworm is fun. There's a few things. If AGS, you listen, in my opinion, I, th I think the hitbox is on the acid on the floor is larger than what you can see. That's just that's just bad. Like we need to be able to see what we're not stepping in. Like if there's nothing under our feet, we shouldn't die for that. And maybe the field of view. So as a melee player, you want to be in, you got to hit the worm. You can't see anything. A lot of it's telltales for the mechanics are on its head, which you have to sort of be looking up and then you're in a stack of your mates and all you see is like Udi's in your face and it's a mess. And maybe like have the ability to zoom out a little bit in this one. But in general, sorry, I've waffled a little bit here. The sandworm is fucking brilliant. Credit to AGS on this one. Credit to them listening to the community, making it harder. And if you are one of those people that are like, oh my God, I'm a casual, I don't have the time to do it. The issue isn't the sandworm, the issue is the gearing process. And, and that's it, you know, it should be hard. It should be difficult. And you should have to go out there and put some time into learning this and, and practicing and failing 20, 30, 40, 50 times. You should. And it is that way. Stop complaining. Get out there. Kick its ass. Have fun. That's the sandworm. On to some PvP. The PvP updates. We have Crossworld OPR, which they are classing as content. Now, in my opinion, it is not content. It is a solution for a dying game. Like that is the bottom line, right? In its current state, it's a solution for a dying game. In the future, it is a tool to allow people to play cross server once the servers are busy. And that is cross server wars, cross server expeditions, cross server XYZ. But they can't class this as content. And AGS, please stop labeling cross server realms as what OPR is. It's not. It's a solution for your game that's dying. And that's okay. Let's just be honest about it, shall we? Um, and we've got a freebie for Arena, which no one else, no no one, no one asked for. All we wanted was an OPR map. We like the bigger fights. But that being said, the freebie for arena genuinely is good fun. <laughs> but why couldn't we have this with an OPR map? I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. But the freebie for arena is incredible fun. It is a welcomed change. It wasn't there on day one for some reason. Maybe they forgot about it, considering I don't think anyone in the office gives a shit about PvP. I think they just honestly forgot to turn it on. Um, so they put it on on day two. What I would love to see is not this two week on two week off sort of thing but you know every six hours it rotates or every you know it's randomized you know you could have the new arena 
let's call it the new, the new arena for four maps, and then the old arena for one, the new arena for two, the old one for five, you know, and, and it's sort of randomized. How they how they do that, I don't know, but it would make it feel a little bit more like this sort of repeatable content that you can indulge in once you get to endgame. But yeah, 3v3 is arena. There's not much PvP, but the arena's kind of fun. Just a quick comment on the wars. Now, obviously, this sort of correlates with raid groups. Raid groups were really big and exciting for me because I love open world. This will allow you to get a group of 20 people in the open world, and we've been doing it. We've been fighting now over Weaver's Fort, fighting over Everful Fort, and you can have 20 people in there all in the same group, and it is genuinely fun. It allows you to include more people without relying on other people to make the groups and so on and so forth. It is good. Now, for some reason, there's been a new piece added as well. So in my first war, we did since the patch, there was half a raid group. When you open your map, you can see everybody now, which is wonderful. However, the way it's been implemented again, has been implemented in a way that whoever's done it clearly doesn't play the content. So the first war we did, it opened up. You could see the raid groups, which is like the dominoes, you know, groups one, two, three, on top of my group. So all the colored groups of your, your group, and then behind that, there was all the white dots now. Like There's these little sort of white dots for all of your allies. And you can see them all running around. One of the big things in wars is that every now and then, if you're, you know, it's getting a bit hectic, you press map, you open your map, you see where your allies are, and you can start to move to regroup. It is basically impossible at the moment. And I don't know why or how this has been brought in. The nameplates are broken. Wars at the moment are genuinely still fun. Outside of the fact the blunderbuss is bugged and something else is bugged and whatever, wars are still good fun. But that is quite an interesting change that they brought in. You can see it in OPR as well. So jump into OPR if you don't war much. Open your map and you'll see all your, your allies. It is a good change. Come on, AJ, sort it out and stop <laughs> stop implementing these strange things. If you need a hand, I'll, uh, I'll help you test these things. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on to the conclusion. I'll let you know genuinely in a short sentence. So to conclude my feelings on season two, in general, it's a nice small content pack. The battle pass isn't that good, in my opinion. And a few of us found a way to essentially do multiple activities of the battle pass in one particular location, which allowed me across a period of eight hours grinding to finish the battle pass in day one. The next day, if it's my fault, I apologize, boys. The next day, AGS has, they nerfed it. And they nerfed it because they said there was an issue with the spawns. There's not an issue with the spawns. They had been like that since Brimstone launch. Like a lot of us were in this cave getting our ass kicked. They did not care about it then. The reason they care about it now is because you can get the battle pass done relatively quickly, which means you won't be paying for skips and you will potentially spend more money. Now, if that's genuinely not the case, that's fine. I believe it is. And that's also fine. It's business. But I do believe players should be able to play the way they want. If we want to do four or five activities in one location because that's the way it's been for six months, don't change it now. It's just a bad look. It's just bad on your current player base. It's just It just doesn't feel right with me. So I'm pretty disappointed with that. So the battle pass to me, would I recommend you buy it? No, no. I, I, I would suggest that you, you didn't buy it. There's not much in there outside of the, the worm. Now, again, it's not criticism necessarily to hate on AGS, but is it worth your money? No. AGS, you know, maybe supplies with a slightly better battle pass if you want people to spend 20, 30 pounds. Outside of that, if you can turn a little bit of a blind eye to some of the bugs that have been, been up, I think we've had over 700 bug reports on the Discord since the launch. It is genuinely fun. <laughs> now, aside from obviously what you've just heard from me say, would I recommend you come play the game? Is it worth the hype or does it belong in the waste pipe? Uh, credit to my, my new series here. It is worth the hype, in my opinion, but for how long? You know, it is genuinely worth downloading the game and doing the new seasonal story. It's pretty good. You get a you get a little look at what they're doing in terms of the content, the 10 man trial, the 20 man trial. It is. Will it keep your attention for a long period of time? Absolutely not. But in a, in a time we are at the moment where gaming and especially the MMO world is a little bit dry, where we wait for the hundreds of MMOs that are supposed to be coming out in the next, uh, you know, 24 months. It is worth the hype. It is worth checking it out. It is worth downloading. It is fun. There's nothing more I can say. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Leave a like, leave a subscribe. We're going to be doing some other content on here. So we're going to be looking at June Awakening. We're going to be looking at Ashes of Creation. And I'm going to be continuing this little fun series on is it worth the hype or does it belong in the waste pipe? Anyway, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy. Stay safe. Enjoy.